Hello everyone and welcome to another recommends video. This time we're going back to the book of short stories called The Cold Equations by Tom Godwin. We've already done a video on the title short story The Cold Equations. There will be a link to it in the upper right hand corner and it is the last story in this book and the most famous one but there are eight other short stories written by Tom that I think deserve to be read. So we're going to be talking about those eight stories here in this video. The first story in here is called The Survivors. In this story, there's a war going on between Earth and the Gurn Empire. Earth is losing and the solar system is surrounded. 8,000 people are on a ship leaving Earth headed for the planet Athena, which they hope is outside of Gurn territory. But to get there, they need to pass through the Gurn lines. They are discovered and disabled and boarded by the Gurn military and they are separated into two groups, those that are useful and those that are not. Those that are useful will be taken to Athena to be slaves. Those that are not useful will be dropped off on a planet and the Gurn military promises to come and get them at a later date. The planet that the 4,000 unwanteds are deposited on is called Ragnarok. It is a planet that has a gravity that is 1.5 times that of Earth. It also has animals that are very dangerous and fevers that can kill people within hours. It also has a very eccentric orbit that gives it very long and cold winters and very hot and dry summers. The story tells you of these humans, how they almost become extinct, falling in number to a few dozen and over the period of 200 of that planet's years, how they are changed and how they ultimately survive and gain revenge on the Gurns. It's the longest story in the book. The second story is called The Harvest and it is the shortest story. This one has an interesting take on certain beliefs and there is an interesting twist at the end. It takes place in Earth's atmosphere at the edge of space. Apparently, there's another intelligent species that inhabit the solar system besides humans. They are beings of energy and they can travel under sun's solar winds to distant parts of the solar system. They manipulate humans to cause certain actions to happen on Earth so that they can feast. By the end of the story, we find out what humans, those that can perceive these creatures, think they are. And that's the twist. The next one is called Brain Teaser. Earth has created its first near light speed interstellar ship called the Thunderbolt and sent it off to the star Sirius. Nine years after it left, from the opposite direction, eight cruisers of an alien species that they called the Slugs invaded the solar system and destroyed the colonies on Mars and Venus and put their own bases there. Then they attacked Earth, but Earth has been able to keep them from landing so far. So Earth had been working on Project Space Warp to develop a faster than light ship that can go to Sirius and get the Thunderbolt and bring it back. Since the Thunderbolt is huge, armed and armored, it should give Earth a fighting chance. They complete the ship and they send it on its test run, which is also by necessity the trip that they have to use to go and get the Thunderbolt. And of course something goes wrong and all of the scientists on board the ship are killed and that leaves just the pilot engineer to figure out what went wrong, how to fix it and how to navigate space warp so he can go and get the Thunderbolt because if he fails, Earth is lost. And the story basically tells you how he does it. The next story is called Mother of Invention. Five men come together to buy an exploration ship. If they can find a planet that is able to be colonized, they would make a fortune. They find a planet that they assume to be in a binary system. When they, when they examine it, they notice the planet has a lot of carbon. When they land, they notice that that carbon takes the form of diamonds. And the planet is also very Earth-like. They seem to have hit the jackpot. But then their troubles begin. 
First, their ship is seriously damaged in an explosion. Then they notice that this system is not a binary system at all. One of the two suns is going to slam into the other one and create a nova that will destroy not just the suns, but the planet that they're on. The story details their efforts to find a solution and the solution they find does not involve repairing their ships or stopping the nova from happening. The next two short stories are set in the same universe. This one is called And Devious the Line of Duty and it takes place on the planet Vesta where a pair of strategic service special agents of the Terran Republic have four days to stop an alliance between the Verdam people's worlds and the planet Jardin which would mean the end of the Terran Republic. How they do this with the help of Alonzo who is a member of a summer intelligence species known as the Altarians, is what this story is about. This next story is called Empathy. It takes place on Deneb 5. A captain in the Frontier Corps and a general in the Extraterrestrial Relations Board both have different ideas of how to get the natives of Deneb 5 to allow primary contact with the Terran Republic. The captain from the Frontier Corps had been slowly gaining the natives trust when the general from the ERB came and upset things and now the natives were about to attack and drive them from their world. How the captain manages to smooth things over with the two Altarians, Looper and Laughing Girl is what this story is about. The Altarians of these two stories look like large talking dogs and while they are not telepathic they are empathic. The next story is called No Species Alone and it takes place on Earth. When a Siltian scout ship lands on Earth to do a survey and kidnap some of the dominant light forms in preparation for an invasion, Jim Hart must fight the snake-like being off, but he doesn't do it alone. He does it with the help of his pets, the domestic house cats. And because of them, Earth was able to gain its first interceptor in preparation for the invasion. And this, the final story of this video, is called The Gulf Between. It is told from two points of view. At the beginning of each chapter, you have the point of view of a man trapped in a spaceship and he's unable to stop it or slow it down. He knows that the acceleration at which it is traveling will eventually kill him, but there's nothing he can do about it. The rest of the story tells how he ended up in that spaceship in the first place, and it is told from the point of view of the man that is his primary opponent. It also tells you about robots and computers. They are not intelligent, they don't have emotions, and they don't care something the man in the spaceship forgot. Most of the story takes place on Earth except for the man in the spaceship who's traveling at high speed into the depths of space. And that is all the stories in this book. They're all very good and I recommend them highly. And I want to thank you for watching and listening and leave us a thumbs up, drop us a comment, and I will see you in the next video.